I'm working on a building. It's a sure foundation. I'm holding up the blood stain. Banner of the Lord. Just as soon as I get through working on my building, going up to heaven. a sure foundation. I'm holding up the blood stain, banner of the Lord. Just as soon as I get through working on my building, going up to heaven to get my reward. Just a sure foundation. I'm holding up the blood stain. Banner of my Lord. Just as soon as I get through, just as soon, just as soon as I get through, just as soon, just as soon as I get through. Working on my building. I'm going, going up to heaven. Are you going, going up to heaven to get my reward? Heaven say, I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. Well, I'm working on a building with a sure foundation. I'm a working on a building. I'm a working on a building. Gonna make it to heaven. Gonna get my reward. I'm a working on a building. Well, I'm a working on a building. I'm working on a building. It's a sure foundation. I'm holding up the blood stain. Banner of the Lord. Just as soon as I get through working on my building, going up to heaven. One more time, say I'm going up to heaven. One more time. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working on a building. Song says it's a sure foundation. It's a sure foundation. It's not rocky, but it's sure. It's not unstable, but it's sure. It's not flaky, but it's sure. Not unsturdy, but it's sure. And I want to give honor to the Lord tonight, who is a true foundation. I want to give honor to my Savior, Jesus Christ, who's a sure foundation. I want to give honor to the Holy Ghost, who is my foundation. I want to thank and praise the Lord tonight for our founder, Dr. White, tonight, who's laid a sure foundation. I want to thank and praise the Lord for our district superintendent tonight, who's working on a sure foundation. I want to praise and thank the Lord for the pastor tonight, who's working on a sure foundation. I want to thank and praise God for being here and for you tonight, for being on a sure foundation. And tonight I want to thank God tonight that he's put us in the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace to work on a sure foundation. And when I was down in prayer, the Lord was just encouraging me about this unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And he was encouraging me tonight out of Psalms 133. And he was encouraging me out of the book of Psalms. And he was encouraging me because of the peace that he's given that surpasses all understanding. That Philippians, the uh, third chapter, I believe, talks about it. And it, it's peace that surpasses all understanding beyond our own imagination. Yeah. But he started off in prayer and he 
he just encouraged me out of Psalms 133. And he says here in Psalms 133 and 1, it says, Behold, somebody say, Behold, Behold. how good, somebody say, How good, good and how pleasant, somebody say, How pleasant good. it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And the Spirit was encouraging me in this because when there is unity, there's not only strength, but there can, if in the Holy Ghost, there is peace. And he says here, it is like a precious ointment. Somebody say a precious ointment. And in the subheading in the Dakes Bible, it says there's unity illustrated. And when you have unity, it's illustrated. And people can see that you're unified and they can discern that you're unified and they can know that you're in the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And they can know that you're in the unity of the faith. They can see it. And it says it's like the precious ointment upon the head. And when you when you put some ointment on somebody's head, you know we get anointed for the fast. You can see the ointment dripping down. And it's like a precious ointment upon the head that ran down. That's why we do the certain things that we do because it's precious. Somebody say it's precious. We're talking about how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's precious to God. It says to God because, you know, it's the word of God. So to God, this is how he sees unity. He said it's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. And when the ointment came on, and even when you get the anointing of the oil for the fast or for a healing or whatever it is, you know, when you look at the oil, sometimes it's just dripping down. And it don't just stay in one spot, but it goes all the way down. It says it's, it's like this this oil that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. And they gave an example of who the oil was put on and how it ran down Aaron's beard. And it went down to the skirts of his garment. And they put the, so much oil on him that it just ran all the way down. He was covered in the anointing oil. Somebody say, I'm covered in the anointing oil. You want the anointing to be all the way, not on the outside, but on the inside, running all the way down from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. And that's how you want the unity to flow as well. Sometimes we want the anointing, but we don't want the oil. I'm going to say that again. Y'all missed that in the spirit. Sometimes you want the anointing, but you don't want the oil because there's unity that comes with the anointing. There's power that comes with the anointing. There's peace that comes with the anointing. And sometimes we have to go down before we come up. Sometimes we have to lay it down before we get back up. I'm just talking about myself tonight. That's all right. It says, it says that went down to the skirts of his garments. And it says, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. He's describing this unity. He's describing this ointment. He's describing, describing this anointing. It says that descended, told you that he had to go down. Upon the mountains of Zion, and it comes down out of heaven. And it descends upon everything, all the grass blades and on the mountain tops and all over the place. It goes down just like the oil. Don't you want the oil to come down from heaven? Don't you want the dew to come down from heaven? It says upon the mountains of Zion for there, somebody said there, the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore there. You want to be where the oil is, there. You want to be where the dew is there. You want to be where the anointing is there. You want to be where the unity is there. And sometimes it has to come down so you can go up. Somebody said, Lord, help me to go down so that I can come up. Sometimes you have to be humble so that you can be brought up. Sometimes you have to, the Bible says, Jesus said it. He said, I must, no, he said over in the book, and I don't want to misquote, he said, I must decrease. That what? That he might increase. I think John said that. He said, I must decrease that he might increase. And when I find myself decreasing, then the dew begins to fall. When I find myself decreasing, then the oil begins to run down the skirts of my garment. When I begin to decrease, he begins to increase. And it says here, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there... The Lord, somebody said the Lord, commanded wherever the oil was, wherever the dew was, there was the blessing. Do you want a blessing tonight? Turn with me over to the book of, I want to go over to Philippians. 
And the Lord said, how good and pleasant. It's good. Somebody say it's good. And it's pleasant. Somebody say it's pleasant. For us to dwell together in unity, not just in the church, not just in the supermarket, not just even in the household, but in the spirit. Somebody say in the spirit. Because you can be in unity in the church, but then you leave out the church and there's no unity. But the Lord said, no, but how good and pleasant it is for you to dwell. And when you dwell somewhere, he doesn't just mean this in one place, but you should dwell there in the spirit. Not just in the natural, because you can have a natural dwelling, but you need a spiritual dwelling. You need a spiritual unity is what he said. You have to be together in the unity of the spirit. Because a lot of folk live together, but are they in unity together? The spirit said, no, we got to be in unity. You can't have one mind. I can't have another mind, and you got another mind. But how can we build? How can two walk together except they agree? He said that we must decrease. He said, I got to decrease. So that he can increase. Somebody say, help, Lord. Help me, Lord. I'm preaching to myself tonight. It's all right. Over in the book of Philippians, let me get there myself. Somebody say, God is a good God. God will help you. He will help you and he will help those around you. Because sometimes we think it's the other person and it's us. It's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. How pleasant. Somebody say, how pleasant. Philippians, I believe I want to go to three. I'm going to start at two, amen. No, I'm going to go to one. He keeps on pushing me back. He says, Philippians one, we're going to start at one and six. He said, being confident of this very thing. Somebody said this very thing. This thing we're talking about tonight is unity. This very thing. This thing we're talking about tonight is peace. This very thing. We're talking about the unity of the faith and the bond of peace. And there's a bond. And the Spirit pointed that word out to me. He said there's a bond of peace. It's not just peace, because he said, could have just said peace, but he said a bond. Somebody say a bond. And when you look up all these different things about the word bond, and it's almost like glue. And when there's a bond, it should be unbreakable. And when there's a bond, it should be where it can't be uh, pried apart. When there's a bond, it's almost like gorilla glue or crazy glue. When it's bonded, when something bonds, it shouldn't be easily moved or easily mowed down. So he said the bond of peace. Who's messing with your bond tonight? What's touching and tapping on and trying to break the bond of peace tonight? Because when the bond of peace gets interrupted, then the unity of the faith can be destroyed. When the bond of peace get some cracks in the bond and some separation in the bond and some holes in the bond, then the unity of the faith suffers. But I want to encourage you tonight in the spirit, in the power of God. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, somebody say in me, the Lord has begun a good work in me. The Lord has begun a good work in you. The Lord has begun a good work in us. I don't care what the devil's trying to say to you tonight, but he's begun a good work in you. He's begun a good work in me. He's begun a good work in us. He put us together with a bond. You may not have never thought about this thing tonight, but I want to encourage you. This very thing that he which has begun, it's a good work because he put it together with a bond. And it's the Holy Ghost have begun a good work in you and me will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And if it's not performed because it's, if it's not performed, it's not because of God. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to tell on the devil tonight. If it's not performed, it's not because of God. There's no failure in God because greater, the Bible says, greater is he that's in me, that's in you because we got the bond than he that's in the world. Over in chapter 2, 5, it says, let this mind be in you. Somebody say, in me. Which was also in Christ Jesus. When he says this here, Paul talks to the saints at Philippi. He said, let this mind, he was encouraging them to let this mind be in them that was also in Christ Jesus because he had confidence in the very thing that God started in them. I 
want to encourage you to have the mind and the confidence that God started with you, that God started in you through this unity of the spirit and the bond of peace in the Holy Ghost. Let the mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus, which was a mind of unity. It was a mind of peace that surpassed all understanding. And it said here, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, somebody said made himself of no reputation. So I'll say yes, Lord. I'll make myself of no reputation. I'll say yes, Lord, to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll lay it down. I'll decrease that you might increase. I'll say yes, Lord, so that the anointing will flow as honey, that it will flow down the skirts of my garment, even as the oil flowed down from heaven, even as it flowed down from the beard of Aaron to the skirts of his garment, even as it came down from the Mount Hermon, the dew. I'll say yes, Lord. Lord, that your program will get over. I'll say yes, Lord. Whatever you got me to do, whatever you want me to do, whatever mind you want me to have, which is in Christ Jesus, the result will be the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Somebody say of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. Are you a servant tonight of yourself or the people or of the true and the living God? And took upon him the form of a servant and was made likeness in the likeness of men being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Lord, I yield. And became obedient. When you yield, you can become obedient. Unto death he did. Even the death of the cross. You know the cross even had to die. Wherefore God, this is the result, also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. I want to encourage you tonight. Oh, how pleasant. You may say, well, where's the tie-in with that? But it's pleasant when you humble yourself. It's pleasant when you're obedient. Somebody say hallelujah. It's pleasant when you lay it down. It's pleasant when you make yourself of no reputation. It's pleasant when you're confident of this very thing. It's pleasant. When you let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, it's pleasant. Hallelujah. Being found in the fashion as a man, you'll be content with whatever state you find yourself in. Paul said that in one place in scripture. You'll humble yourself. It's pleasant. Amen. God highly exalted him as a result of this mind that he had. Highly exalted. Somebody say highly exalted. On top of that, gave him a name which was above every name because he decreased, then he increased. Sometimes we try to do it the other way. We try to increase, then we wind up, end up with, with decrease. But there's a formula. He said, I must decrease, then I will increase. Amen? And it says here over in chapter 3, I'm just going right along. In 3 and 9, it says, and be found in him. Somebody say, and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness. Somebody said, not having my own righteousness. You know, because there's a way that seemeth right unto man. But the Bible says, somebody said, the Bible says, but the end thereof is destruction. But I want to encourage you tonight, be found in him. Not having our own righteousness, which is of the law. It says, but, somebody said, but. That which is through faith, the faith of Christ. The righteousness, somebody say the righteousness, which is of God by faith. Sometimes we can be a little legalistic. Sometimes we can be a little, uh, a, a, a little uptight. Sometimes we can be so, as I came into the gospel, they used to say, don't be so, uh, don't be so spiritual that you ain't no earthly good. Because you ain't going to win nobody. And if you win them, you ain't going to keep them. And you're going to be a runner offer. So, not having my own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of God by faith. And with that righteousness comes the unity of the spirit. With the righteousness comes the bond of peace. With the righteousness comes this 
confidence of this very thing that he's begun in us and he's able to perform it till the day. With this righteousness comes a lot of things such as the fruit of the spirit. With this righteousness, which is of God, by faith comes long suffering and the gifts of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit. Sometimes we have to, I heard it last week, and sometimes we just got to wait on God. I was encouraged to twice that just, just wait on God. Just wait on God. God will reveal it by, by just wait on God. Not having my own righteousness. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. We haven't been to the cross. But sometimes we feel like it. Being made conformable unto his death. If by any means. Somebody say if by any means. I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. Somebody say, I follow after. I'm following after the Lord. Hosea 6 and 3 says that I follow on to know the Lord. It says that I, I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, I don't just want to be apprehended, but I want to apprehend what he wants me to apprehend. I want to get what he wants me to get. If it's the dew that's coming down from Herman, I want to get that too. I want to be apprehended by that. If it's the oil that's flowing down as it flowed down from the skirts of Aaron's beard, then I want to be apprehended by that. If it's the power, somebody says it's the power, then I want the power. I want to be apprehended. As I'm wrapping up, brethren, somebody say brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended. Paul even took it a step further. He said, look, I, I didn't even apprehend it of my own self. The Spirit had to reveal it to me is what he's saying. The Holy Ghost had to do the work. Because I was on one track mind, and I didn't have the mind of Christ, and I didn't have this, and I had my own righteousness. Paul really broke it down. He wasn't just preaching at them. He wasn't just preaching to them, but he was preaching for himself as well. Paul was letting them know that it's not because I'm just preaching to you. He said, but there was something he had to work out on the inside of himself. He said, so brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, but this one thing I do. Somebody said, this one thing I do. He said, forgetting. Somebody said, forgetting. And when you forget those things which are behind, you can have the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. When you forget those things which are behind, you can let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus. When you forget those things that are behind, it is when the Spirit reveals to you how good, he says, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren, for family, for saints, for spouses, for children. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. But this one thing I do in order for that to happen, forgetting those things which are behind. And can you imagine if the Lord didn't forget those things which are behind? What we did yesterday, how we offended yesterday, how we didn't forgive yesterday, how we didn't do this yesterday. But Paul said forgetting, somebody said forgetting those things which are behind and reaching, somebody said I'm reaching forth, somebody said forth, unto those things which are before. He says, this is what I'm doing. I press. Somebody say, I press. I think somebody ever had preached that recently. Somebody say, I press. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Somebody said, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing for it. It's not just a cakewalk. It's not just a walk in the park, but I got to really press for it. It's a daily, daily, daily laying down and picking up. I press. For the mark, for the prize of the high calling. Every day you get out the bed, it's a press. And you might say, I don't feel pressed. I don't feel stressed. I feel blessed. But you're still pressing. Because the devil's still messing. He said, let us therefore as I close. Therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Sometimes we reveal it stuff about other folk, but what is he revealing to you about you? What is he revealing to me about me? Am I caught up in my own righteousness? Have I decreased though he might increase? 
Have I thought about how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity? What am I doing in God? It says, nevertheless, somebody said, nevertheless. nevertheless. Where to we have already attained. What have we already attained to? Let us walk then by the same rule and let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together, he says of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. I want to encourage you tonight how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Somebody say how good and how pleasant. How good and how pleasant. The Lord likes things to be good as you stand. He likes things to be pleasant. He don't like riff, raff, foolishness. He don't like disunity. He don't like disorganization or disarray. He don't like drama. But he likes unity and pleasantness. For the brethren to dwell together in unity, he said it's good. and it's, He said behold. In other words, look at this. This is an expectation I have of you. He said behold. How pleasant. How good and how pleasant. Because God does things that are good. And as we're closing tonight, Paul says in verse 8, in Philippians 4 and 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, what are you thinking on tonight? Whatsoever things are of good rapport, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise. He said, think on these things. Because that's how we dwell together in unity. Those things which you have both learned, what have you learned? And received, what have you received? And heard, what have you heard? And seen, what have you seen? He says, in me, what have you seen me do? He says, do. And he said, and the God of peace, somebody said the God of peace shall be with you. If we want the Lord to be with us as we close, he said, if we do those things, then the God of peace, he said, he'll be with us. Don't you want the God of peace to be with you tonight? He said, forgetting those things which are behind, because the Lord said, how good and pleasant. He didn't say how messed up and dysfunctional. He said, but how good and pleasant. That tells me God has an expectation. And it's up to us to meet his expectation. I want to encourage you as we stand tonight. We're going to look unto the Lord tonight. How good and pleasant, he said. He told me in prayer, he said, that's my expectation. How good and pleasant. He said, I don't know how you're dwelling, but this is what I want you to do. He said, how good and pleasant. And he let me know by any means necessary. Whoever got to decrease, you need to decrease so you can increase. Look inward and be pleasant. Father, in the name of Jesus, 